Hi, this is Carrie Brownstein. This is DJ Premier. This is Darren Aronofsky. You got the Rizzo right here. Rose McGowan. Right here. Aisha Tyler. The tribe Called Quest. Fred Armisen. Fritz Paul. Javier Munoz, Seth Meyers. Frankie Cosmos. Flying Lotus. Hi, we're Haim, and you're listening to the Talk House Podcast. Ow! What's up? What is up? It's your host, Elia Einhorn. Welcome back to the Talk House Podcast. This week, joining me from across the couch... <laughs> Nick Dawson, editor-in-chief of Talkhouse Film. There is not a huge chasm between us, either in our long-standing friendship or just physically right now. <laughs> it almost seems like we need to figure out how to share an armrest here, you know? Yeah. Have we ever flown together? We've never flown together. It's a yet. It's a yet for us, Nick. Yeah. But you did fly out to make this show happen. This is our second and final episode from LA Comic-Con and features Juliana Harkavy and Ryan Hurst. That was such a smooth transition. I'm literally a professional. I'm so impressed with you. Yeah, this is an awesome conversation. And I have to say, I was a little trepidatious before, and and, and I feel like I should explain why, because LA Comic Con is this massive, kind of overwhelming, I mean, I don't know how many rooms it takes up. It's just, it's huge. I mean, there's tens of thousands of people there, Tens right? of thousands of people there. So many rooms and so many events going on simultaneously. And the people there are just like going from one thing to another to another. You mean both on the fan and artist side? I'm talking particularly about the artist. Okay. Yeah. And so we had this plan to get Ryan and Juliana together. And everybody was kind of signed on. But we got final confirmation like five minutes before it was supposed to happen. Oh my God, five minutes. After which I went and physically like retrieved Ryan from the main <laughs> hall and like painfully walked. Just I'm like, it's it's so far to get you to this room that we're recording in. And then, and this is not a small thing. It came to my attention that Ryan thought he was appearing on Juliana's podcast. Okay. She does not have a podcast actually, but it would be great if she did. And Juliana thought that she was appearing on Ryan's podcast. <laughs> Nick, this is 2019 when you recorded this. Everybody 2020. Has a Everyone's Everybody got a podcast. Has a podcast. They probably Your both fish have has a podcast. Your cat has a podcast. My cat actually does have a podcast. <laughs> but a yeah. podcast. So, so basically, what you have here, and I, I was standing there next to our superstar LA engineer, Ali Niku. Shouts. And I was just going, I actually don't know what's going to happen. And what I saw unfolding in front of me was just like two incredibly cool, generous people adapting in this amazing way and connecting for this conversation, which is kind of wonderful to behold or Nick, to behold with the ears. What is the, what is the, the oral version of behold? Uh, I don't know. Uh, listen, here. Here. The, attuned. I'll, I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. I have to say, Nick, this is truly a testament to these two being seasoned pros. They sit down and no matter whose podcast they thought they were on, they rocked this conversation. It was so fun to listen to. And yeah. I actually laughed out loud at one point. Yeah, it's funny and it's, and it's sweet. And they found th- these points of connection. I mean, for, for people who don't know who these guys are, and it's possible. Let's back up a it's bit. It's possible. If you've missed The Walking Dead, if you've missed Sons of Anarchy, if you've missed Arrow, let us inform you. <laughs> They're really good shows. You should watch them. And, and Juliana Archivy is Dinah Drake, a.k.a. Black Canary, on Arrow, currently the CW show. And the cool little hinge was that she and Ryan are both Walking Dead alums. She was on for a couple episodes uh, a few seasons back, and he is a current cast member. And as you mentioned before, he played uh, Opie Winston on, on Sons of Anarchy. He's been in Bates Motel. He's also in, in Bosch uh, at the moment. He uh, comes from an acting family, and he's just one of those guys where like, oh, yeah. Him, that guy. I like that guy. That guy's good. So they had this great conversation and there was a a beautiful moment, like literally like a minute into the podcast where they discovered that they both love dogs. I mean, it's not an unusual thing necessarily, but they both have like a deep love of dogs. This is an extreme version of that. It is. It is indeed. And if you listen very carefully, you can hear me audibly sigh with relief. This was a moment (laughs) that I knew that that this was going to be okay. Oh, I love it. Well, they get into so much more in this conversation. We hear all about the bliss of skydiving, which Ryan has done about a thousand times. Which is amazing. And has some great stories about it. It was also so fun to hear some behind the scenes Walking Dead stories. Yeah, there's some nice details they share about life in Atlanta shooting that show. Lunch with zombies. Uh Uh-huh. Who knew? Yeah. Something I had never considered, Nick, is what the experience of having a body cast taken is like. Yeah, essential if you're a superhero like Juliana. 
And there is an amazing story within that segment about yeah. Marlon Brando. This is where I laughed out loud as yeah, I was it's, listening. It, the, that story is legitimately worth the price of admission, which is free, <laughs> but still, God damn it, that's a good story. We hear a little bit about Juliana's uh, mooted, shall we say, uh, move into a singing career, which I'd be very excited about. And Ryan's early break into acting via spam. Should we run the tape? Let's run that tape. You're rolling, yes? Okay, oh, good. Oh, we are, okay. Okay. Uh, well, um, I'm Juliana, hi. I'm Ryan. Nice. <laughs> We're shaking hands. Yeah. We're shaking hands. Um, yeah, I'm, an, I'm right now, I'm on Arrow. So I'm here at the convention just meeting fans. Okay. And, um, we also have The Walking Dead in common. Yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So when did you start Arrow? I started... Well, let's go back. Let's yeah. go back. And then you can tell me what to do. Okay. So where do you live? I live in Vancouver right now. That's where we shoot the show. I love Vancouver. You do? Do you spend a lot of time? Yeah. Yeah. I've shot a few shows up there. It's yeah. great. I yeah. love it. It's It's been nice to have a break from LA. Um, so we've been there for four years almost. Okay. And, uh, and I just come back here as often as I can for sunshine. But Okay. Yeah. Do you live in LA? Yeah, I do live in LA. Do you said we. Are, are, do you have kids? I uh, do not have kids. I have dogs. Yes. yes. How many dogs? Uh, th- <laughs> one just passed away, so oh, two. I'm sorry. Two. It's I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. yeah, it was. But it's nice because Vancouver is a. Um, it's just a nice, like, sort of quiet spot where you can have a, you know, family. Um, yeah. Yeah, like a nice little home. It's quiet and yeah. beautiful. I have twelve dogs. Honestly? Yeah. Where? You, how? Yeah, exactly. Don't tell. I'm not telling anybody because it's totally illegal. In LA, yeah. yeah. No, but I'm a I'm a I'm a professional dog trainer also. Um, no kidding. Yeah, all positive reinforcement, just treat-based, compassionate, force-free um, dog training. I've been doing that for quite a long time. It's I love one that. of my passions. That and Kundalini yoga and skydiving. Those are my big. Really? Yeah. It, but is uh, but dog training is that's my heart. That's my heart right there. I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. And you, so do you foster dogs or you? Yeah, we okay. foster too, yeah. That's beautiful. And you, are you, is it just you? Do you have a family? Uh, just a wife. Just my wife, that. my wife, Molly. That's so nice. But yeah, we, I shot up in Vancouver quite a bit and it was funny, maybe, I don't know, this maybe 15 years ago or so, I did a uh, mini series up there and I spent nine months all in the, what's the, what's the one hotel? I'm the sure. Sutton, I bet. The Sutton. I was there for <laughs> nine months and it drove me crazy. It was terrible. Isn't it? It's, I mean, it, it was, I mean, it's a great place, but well, for nine months. And then I went up there to do another show and, uh, and I was, and they were like, where do you want to stay? And I was like, anywhere but the Sutton. And I got <laughs> so lucky. I got so lucky. I got this little old man rented me his cabin on the water in Deep Cove. Oh my gosh. And it was like, you know, Deep Cove is like one of the most sought after real estate places on the planet. Stunning. I mean, there's like, you know, $400 million house on one side, $25 million house on the other, and this tiny little cabin that was all in the water. And he, for whatever reason, he only decided to rent it to me. Wow. And so I rented it for one show, and then I came back for another three or four seasons. I was on a show called Bates Motel, and I just kept coming back there. And he was this old man, and I kept going like, where does this guy go? You know, I would go like, because he would just live there and then he would rent it to me, but it was literally gorgeous. It was just a wall of windows overlooking Deep Cove. After it was, nine it was, months at the side. It was heaven. It was heaven. I love it there. And you worked, while you were in Deep Cove, yeah. you worked in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. It, there was nothing, I mean, I liked the hotel this, when I first, I stayed there for six months and at first yeah. it was like, oh, it's so beautiful. And then by the time you leave, like the stripes on the wallpaper <laughs> look like a prison cell. <laughs> it's like, it's like bars. It's the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. And you don't really know you're in downtown, so it's a little gray. You don't realize yeah. that Deep Cove is like not yeah, that far away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. I love that you have 12 dogs. That is so, yeah. that makes me feel better because I want to have, you know, four or five dogs. Yeah, what are your dogs' names? Lily and Brooklyn. And what kind? Uh, Lily is, we, I found her in a swamp. I mean, literally, like, okay. I don't know uh, what she is. She's a, I think she's a beaver. And <laughs> <laughs> the other one's a pit bull. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. What about yours? Do you have, uh, well, what are their names? Uh, gosh. Okay. So there's Hero, Uma, Royal, Kid Kid, Lyra, Orange and Green, Ara, Sophia, Aruni, and uh, who am I forgetting? And Milo. I love that. Yeah. And then we also have a duck. 
Seriously? Yeah, Does he name, live in the house? Yeah. His oh. name is Sebastian. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, but I just, I fell in love with, with that kind of training, you know, is it was one of those things where when we decided that we were going to sort of keep, you know, we had four dogs and then they, there was an accidental pregnancy and they ended up in more. And, uh, oh. and yeah, there was seven and then we kept five of them and my best friend took one and his mother took another. Uh, but I was like, let's, I, I think we should keep all of these dogs. And, you know, I'd, I'd known a lot about training, but yeah. I, but I kind of said to myself, I kind of prayed on it. I was like, oh, I was like, I was like, universe, I was like, send me, you know, anything that I decide to do. I just kind of dive deep. I love it. You know, um, and, uh, and I said, I want to learn everything that there is to know about positive reinforcement dog training. And so about six months later, a uh, friend of a friend of a friend of a friend gave me this guy's number and I called him. And this 70-year-old Santa-looking guy shows up, and I just started talking with him. And he, every, and he started the very first dog training lesson with me. So he goes, all right, there's a part of the human brain called the adaptive unconscious. And I went, you and me are going to get along just fine. Cool. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and by the end of the first time that we, that, uh, you know, I was watching him teach seven dogs all at once without saying a word, all with hand signals. Right. And not touching the dog, not saying no, ne- never being, never, you know, forcing the dog to do anything. Wow. Just doing treats and, and praising the dog. And I was like, it was like watching a magician. Oh my God. And by the end of it, I said, teach me everything you know. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, no, I really want to uh, teach me everything you, you know. And, uh, and then I slowly learned that he uh, was actually one of the f- sort of four people who invented positive reinforcement dog training. He's, he was a, had, was a six-time bestseller and all of this kind of really? stuff. Yeah. So I, I, that's one of my passions. What are, I, what are your sort of passions? Well, dog rescue. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I could use some training help, but the rescuing I can yeah. do, I'm good at. And, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, music. Okay, what kind of music? music. Um, you I singer? play. I can. I sing. Yeah, yeah. I like f- sort of folksy, bluegrassy kind yeah. of alternative music. Yeah. Uh, and classical music, I play on piano, and uh, yeah, visual art, um, just mm-hmm. anything artistic, really. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And anything animal related. Have you put together an album? No, it's funny you say that. I'm I'm learning about all these new platforms and ways that you can just sort of release your own songs sure, now. Sure. That I had yeah. no idea it was. I mean, you can honestly just release a song onto i like from that you record on GarageBand. I know, isn't that the best? Though? It is yeah. amazing. So I kind of feel like there are no excuses anymore. Correct. So, but you're I, a songwriter. You, yeah, and, yeah. I, I am. But music was something that I always kept to myself because I think it feels more personal than acting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you know my own words, whereas as an actor, you're kind of, you're somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, I just, uh, for this other thing that I was doing, I just had to, they asked me to record a song mm. for this thing that I was doing. And I was like, what? And they, they threw it to me at the last minute. And I was like, I mean, I can sing, right. but is it really is like when singing, especially singing and then letting it out, it's, yeah. you feel so naked. It's you so, so vulnerable. Yeah. It is. That's so. Do you play instruments? No, too? no. But you're a singer. <laughs> a little bit. Cool. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's really. Do you like to do karaoke? No. I hate, I hate karaoke. I get such anxiety, and yes. everyone expects yeah. because you're a performer that oh, you. You're go go yeah. up there. No. Yeah. 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 Oh no. I, I yeah. have nightmares about karaoke. Yeah, actual same here. Nightmares. <laughs> same here. <laughs> now my wife is a singer. She loves karaoke. She's like a classically trained singer. She sings wow. opera and all this kind of stuff. So she she's very like you know if somebody's singing she. she loves to, to get up there and do it. But uh, but me, I'm just like, no way. No, no way. I envy that. Like yeah. people who are just free with like, yeah. you know, yeah. their voice. <laughs> it's, it's very cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you sing, let's see, what else? Yeah. Oh, you skydive, you said? Yeah. yeah. I've been a skydiver for a long, long time. Oh, that's... Um, yeah. Is sky, have you ever been skydiving? No. Do you no. want to? No. I don't think I would. Okay, good. That's <laughs> interesting. It's, it's, it's interesting that you say that is because there's sort of three categories. There's either people have skydived mm-hmm. or people go, I've always wanted to. And that's, you know, people say that a lot. Is you'll about eighty five percent of people go like oh I, I've always wanted to do that right and then you really put them to the test and they don't want to right but very few people are just honest and just say no I, I don't think I want to I don't want to do that I, I would think you hear that all the time <laughs> no you don't wow. you, you you hear is because I I have like a thousand skydives or so yeah and I've been licensed forever and um 
I've taken my entire family skydiving when I was on a show called Sons of Anarchy. Took the entire cast, the entire crew, everybody. You're very good on that show, by the way. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but a lot, what you hear a lot of is like, oh, I'd love to do that. And then you go, okay, let's go this weekend. And then they go, no, I don't. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to make conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that's something I actually don't want to do. Um, but, you know, I, got, I, I fell in love with it. I remember the very first time that I went skydiving, uh, I was sitting there. I was going tandem with somebody um, mm. strapped on my back. And there was two people right in front of me. There's this tiny little Japanese couple who barely spoke any English. And, you know, we get up to altitude and you're, you know, you're just so nervous. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they open up, you know, the side of the plane. And your brain kind of checks out. You kind of go like, I've been on a plane before, but never where they just open up the side of the oh plane. And then I see this this little Japanese lady look at me and just go bye bye. <laughs> and then she like corkscrews out of the plane. And I remember at that moment, before I'd ever jumped out, I was totally addicted because I oh. saw this lady open up the side of the plane, look at me with no fear, and go bye just like she was walking into the other room. That's so cool. It was like watching a superhero. I went like, I've got to do this really? until I'm not afraid of this anymore. I, I just didn't know that it was possible, you know, that that existed, that somebody goes, all right, see you later. And I went, oh my God. Wow. So I was just totally, totally hooked. And then maybe around 75 or 100 jumps that started to happen is where, you know, you were jumping so often that the, that the fear goes away. And I remember being in the sky, like flying once, and I was like working on moves and stuff. And I just went, oh, I was like, I didn't even think about jumping out. I was thinking about what I was going to do next. And I was like, oh, I guess I've crossed the finish crossed line. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's, that's always so fun. cool. So but you yeah. really, you don't feel any fear anymore. Every once in a while, it'll sort of come back. Yeah. Um, but is um, for the most part, no. Do you think it's, do, is it like a peaceful feeling when you're in the air? There's nothing like it on the planet. Really? When you're in the air by yourself, it's the, it's comparable to, to nothing. Is it's just you in the sky, feeling like you're flying. You know, wow. is um, it is the most serene, peaceful feeling there is. So it doesn't just feel you're not just in like a, a fall. It's no that that's the big misconception is you never ever feel like you're falling. Oh, is that's so you know because even when you jump out of the plane, the plane and you are traveling at two hundred plus miles an hour. Wow. So when you jump out, it's not like you know on a roller coaster where you feel that drop in your stomach. Right. That's because you're going from a dead stop to going fast. On an airplane, you're already going 200 miles an hour. So when oh. you jump out, you just immediately feel like you're flying. There's no feeling of dropping. That is cool. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I would start with like, well, I was going to say I might start with like bungee jumping, but I've actually heard that that's more dangerous. I would never go bungee jumping. Oh my jumping. God, that's so weird. <laughs> I would really? never go bungee jumping. A bunch of my friends have, and they're like, what? Like, you go skydiving, you want to go bungee jumping? I was like, nope. <laughs> I would never. I don't know why. Yeah. To me, that's the, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's like, I was like. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I admire that bravery. Yeah. So how long have you been on Arrow for? I started in season five. We're on season eight now. Um, so, you know, three years, a little over three years, I've been down in Vancouver um, it's going quickly. This is our last year. I've, I've never seen the show. I'm sorry. I've never seen no, the show. No, it's fine. Yeah, it's, so there's a you, lot. who do you so play on the show? On. I play, her name is Dinah Drake. She's the Black Canary. So she has a sonic scream that can kill people. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's so fun. It's the most fun. Uh, probably other than Walking Dead, it's, it is the most fun I've had And you have a show. costume in the whole business. The, whole, the costume and you just feel like a badass every day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you have a mask also? Mm-hmm. Full mask, half mask? It's a, well, it's only over my eyes. Okay. But in order to make it, they had to do the whole head cast, mm-hmm. which was just, have you ever had that done? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do, do you, it no. doesn't bother you, does no. it? No, Did you freak out? I didn't. No. <laughs> yes, you did. I, I mean, internally, I think I kept <laughs> yeah. it cool. Like, But yeah, I, it was not comfortable. Yeah. No, I've, 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 I've had a full head cast like quite a few times. Mm-hmm. And like you, you fall into two categories. <laughs> Is either you freak out or you fall asleep. I fall asleep. You fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. But I always like That's when cool. you go in for a, for a head cast is like the, the makeup people, they're so, they just treat you like you're a caged animal. <laughs> they do. Are you okay? <laughs> Is true. there anything that we could? <laughs> and And I always kind of like, act really nervous and then I turn to him and I go I'm the fall oh. asleep type and they go okay fine just sit in the chair <laughs> you just start hyperventilating <laughs> yeah. to mess with them yeah no but I heard a story I said I said alright so I know that you've got good freak out actor stories like yes. give me one of them and I was talking with this guy who's actually in Vancouver and he goes I've got the best one 
And I was like, all right, well, I've heard a bunch of these. So, like, tell me your story. <laughs> he said, all right, I was doing a, a head cast of Marlon Brando. And I was oh like, okay. God. So he comes in, he sits in the chair, they start to put things on. And, you know, about 15 or 20 minutes into the process, he starts to hypoventilate and starts clawing at the, at the goop. And then, you know, so he said, oh, let's take a break and we'll try again, you know. He said, no, let's just go ahead and let's do it. We'll just, get it. We'll just put it on. We'll just get the hell out of here. So they put it, they go and they try it again. About 15, 20 minutes in, same thing. Hyperventilating starts oh, no. frantically scraping this stuff off. Oh, they said, let's just call it a day. He goes, he has lunch, he comes back. He says, I just want to get this done. I just want to get, let's just get it over with. Sit him in the chair. They put on the goop, then they put on the, you know, the plaster part, yeah. and then it starts hardening. <laughs> it's hardening, and it becomes like a cast, you know, like an arm cast, like a leg cast. It's, you know, it's, it's hard. And he starts hyperventilating, starts clawing at the hard part, trying to get out, pops up out of his chair, oh, no. spinning <laughs> around, oh, no. knocking things over, <gasps> makes his way out of an emergency exit, the alarm for the building no. goes off. Oh he stumbles into the street because it, it was like right near a street. <laughs> stumbles into a street where a car screeches, almost hits him, like like knocks him. He falls over where the cast like breaks on the ground. That you know they run out. They're there. They help him up, and the guy in the car goes, "It's Marlon fucking Brando." <laughs> I love and they it. usher him back inside, and I was like, "That is the best story." Oh my god, that is <laughs> and unbelievable! It was, and it was a hundred percent true. The guy was not pulling like it was a hundred percent true. He showed me the exit. He showed me the street. No yeah, way! Yeah, and yeah. at the studio in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is the yeah. best story. It makes me feel much better. <laughs> I, they did assure me that most of the guys who people who do freak out are like big, strong Marlon yeah, Brando types, yeah, like yeah, you yes, would correct, expect. Correct. Oh, that is so. I wonder. If it cracked perfectly, so he didn't have to actually do it again. I know, right? <laughs> <Just> like <laughs> make the perfect head. Did they have to do the full body for for you for the costume? Oh or no, did, or, my or, god! Do they do that? They must. Full yeah, body. yeah. For, oh, for, that for would be. Things, I yeah. might need. Yeah, some kind of sedation. Yeah. That's, like, that's no. It was just probably to you know like my right. below my yeah, shoulders. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Have you had a full body? No. Oh no, my god. No. no. Sounds like a, a nightmare. <laughs> So then tell me about your time on Walking Dead. I was only on uh, two episodes in okay. season four. Um, okay. I died at the same time as the governor. Mm -hmm. When did you start? Just last season. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and you're still on? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think we might still have, I don't even know who's still on the show. Um, probably the only person that's still is um, is Norman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's probably, that's love him. probably about it. Uh, and, uh, and Melissa. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually funny because the two episodes that I was in were also the two episodes of other Arrow cast members. Like, they, we just so happened to be in the same two episodes. So, three of us Re met. Three of you? It, me and Kirk Acevedo and Audrey Marie Anderson were okay. all, like, yeah, all on the, sa on so the wait, same two episodes. Oh, my God. Yeah, so random. So, when we went back up in uh, Vancouver, we had some history. So, you guys, but you guys hung out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, it was it was cool. Sometimes those things happen. Like it's an energy thing, and then yeah. you find people again. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's it is a small industry. Yeah, and you like it? Are you in Georgia? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. How do you like it? It's cool. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've shot there quite a few times, but I, I'm. I mean, I live out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have loved to be uh, on the show longer. It was really cool. Yeah, it was a fun show. It it is. It's just fun. I, I will never forget, just cracked me up, like, being at lunch and, like, turning next to you and seeing, like, the most horrifying, mm -hmm. like, half, like, just mm -hmm. falling apart zombie eating, like, you know, a sandwich. It's hilarious. Drinking a Dr. When they're Pepper. all outside, you know, smoking together. You're yeah. like, it's just so <laughs> funny. It's so surreal. <laughs> <laughs> I always love when the voice coming from the zombie just does not match the zombie. <laughs> it's completely. You're just like, oh, Mr. Hurst. And you're just like, really? <laughs> that's the best. Yeah, no, that's, I, I felt very lucky to, I think that was the first like really big show that I did. And I, I just couldn't believe the actual scale of it. Like it feels like you're in Jurassic Park. The, the yeah. set looks real. Yeah, yeah. So when did you start acting then? I started, well, I was a nine when I started. Okay. Um, I mean, I was doing mostly commercials and stuff because I was focusing on school. And, um, but yeah, I started when I was nine. My parents said I could go to acting class, but not 
like have an agent, but because mm-hmm. we had moved to Los Angeles, like agents come to the acting class from anyway. where? Uh, from at that point, we moved around a lot. I was born in New York, and then we like jumped to uh, New Mexico, New Jersey, and then to California. And my okay. dad was doing um, publishing with Warner Brothers. Okay. Funny enough, with um, DC Comics, so it oh, kind of all wow. came full circle. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we went to LA, and I took acting classes, and I wasn't allowed to, you know, audition. But right. Um, but then they scout acting classes, so it kind of just happened that mm-hmm. you know they had agents there, and I started young, which. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend if I had a kid to mm-hmm. start at nine. It's a lot. Why not? What was your experience? I just, you know, you become, first of all, aware of rejection, which at that age is kind of a hard thing sure, to wrap your head sure, around. It's sure. like on, on that scale as well. Yeah. Um, and Do you remember the first times of feeling... Rejected. Yeah, tell me about it. I remember like I, I had gone on literally like seven auditions for this uh, Jungle Book show that they were going to do on Fox. And I don't think it ever went through. Okay. But I was like, I would have moved to Malaysia until I was 18. It was like some life changing <laughs> thing. Right, yeah. Right, right. It was, and it was just everything I had wanted. Like I was staring at myself in the mirror. Like, I mean, it was, it's funny now because I was so yeah. little. I was probably 11. But I was just like, this is your whole life. <laughs> this is everything you've ever wanted. Like just so hyped up. Yeah. And then yeah. I found out I didn't get it. And it yeah. was something like, oh, she's just too tall like she's a lot taller than the boy who was going to play Mowgli yeah. and um, yeah. and so then I became conscious of like my body at yeah. a young age which is another shitty part of the industry sure, sure and I just remember like having to go to school and like sit through you know whatever the class I was in and just feeling so like awful uh-huh. um, mm-hmm. it's a lot that's a lot to deal with as a kid mm-hmm. you know? I then, loved it, but... And then at one point, like, what did you find? What sort of coping mechanism? And at mm-hmm. what point did you find something that made it, like, palatable for you for to really pursue as an adult and as a career? I don't know if I have yet. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate rejection. Every audition that comes, I'm uh, like, this is your whole life. Yeah, it's, well, it's so sad, kind of too. Oh, like, I know. Oh, I feel you. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, it's. I remember. I was. I remember once. I ran into. Uh, I was at a showing of The Quiet Man, oh. and Maureen O'Hara was there, and I and I asked her, and I just you know the good old kind of like, what advice do you give to young uh, actors and actresses? And she said, you have to have something else to do. And she said, you know, this is in the days of vaudeville and all that kind of stuff. And she was like, my parents said that you have to have something else that you can actively do that brings you joy before you go and do this profession. Because all it is is rejection. All it is is a complete and total mindfuck, you know, 24-7. It's a marathon mindfuck. So you have to have something that you can actively do Mm -hmm. that fulfills you so that you're not sitting there waiting by the phone. You know, is that... You can do as much as you can do. You go in there, you you knock it out of the park, and then they still don't cast you, and you go, okay, fuck it. I'm going to go do this anyways, and mm-hmm. it still can make you feel good. She didn't say all of those words, but that's what I took from yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. You do. You need something else, I think. And as an adult, I think sometimes it can even be just like getting away. Like, And, and Vancouver yeah. felt like that a little bit, just mm-hmm. like to get out of the rat race of it all. Yeah. Just need like a, a break. Yeah, big time. That's really. Cool. When did you start acting? Um, very much the same. My father's an actor. My mother's an acting coach. Really? Um, but uh, they kept me out of the business completely uh, until I was like 17. Wow. They were like, I, I would beg them. I would go like, let me go to auditions. Let me go to this. And they were like, no. They were like, you are a child. Be a child. Yeah. And then like in high school, I started doing a lot of plays. And, and I had a mentor uh, in high school who was just this encyclopedia of knowledge mm-hmm. who really sort of handheld me through really becoming an actor. Even though my mother was phenomenal, my father was, you know, an actor. Is I had this mentor in a, in, in a man named Dr. Ford mm-hmm. who was a professor at USC for 25 years and then gave it up and decided to teach in high school. So it was like this enormous enormous amount of knowledge that I that I sort yeah. of just sucked up like a sponge. But then right around 17 uh, is when I just started acting professionally. That's so cool. Yeah. What was the first thing you did? First thing I did was a spam commercial. Yes. My spam commercial where there was a, a news reporter who was interviewing people about spam. <laughs> and, you know, it was a good old man on the street. And she was asking people about spam. And she said... So one can feeds three of you. And then she put the mic in front of me and I said, or one of us, three times. 
That was that was my big break into the pit. But I'll tell you something: is is that that thing ran? It was a national commercial that ran for four and a half years. God bless. Because I mean, how many spam commercials have you seen? They, they, they don't have a lot of. They're, you know, they're putting it all in in one classic idea. Yeah, that they're man on the street. So that thing that thing kept me alive. You know, right out of high school. So funny. Yeah, because I was living on my own. You know, by the time I was seventeen, and so that paid the rent for a long time. Were you seventeen? when you did it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you were like, oh, okay, I'm imagining you as a kid. You were, like, yeah. you were no. older. I was 17. That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> I'm going to Google that commercial. Please don't. You're not missing much. <laughs> of all of your body of work, yeah, that's what I'm going to look it. up you're tonight. Like, you're like, that's him. That's, <laughs> that's him the one. all over. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. That's really neat. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, it was so nice talking to you. It was so nice to talk to you. This was really fun. (laughs) It was fun. I'm going to ask you some dog questions now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, perfect. Bye. Bye. Juliana Harkavy, Ryan Hurst, thank you so much for coming on each other's shows as well as the (laughs) Talk House podcast. Yeah, those guys were a genuine pleasure to work with and to hang out with. Thank you also to Ali Niku, who recorded this talk, and to Jonathan Aguilar, Ariel Stepp, Sheldon Price, and the whole LA Comic Con gang. Today's show, as mentioned, was recorded by Ali Niku in LA and Mark Yoshizumi in Brooklyn. Mark is also our co-producer. The Talk House podcast theme song was written and recorded by The Range. While you're, uh, you know, doing the whole Talk House podcast thing, why not go back and check out Felicia Day and Jonah Ray? They're excellent very funny very entertaining conversation that also recorded at LA Comic Con and why not dig into uh, Jim Hemphill on Arrow and Greg Berlanti's other DC shows on the CW Ryan's Walking Dead colleague Pollyanna McIntosh on her directorial debut Darlin and Fear the Walking Dead's Colin Domingo on acting and food all available for zero dollars at talkhouse.com and check us out on socials at talkhouse across the board we have some great pictures from this taping certainly do and Ryan's eyes are closed in all of them <laughs> hashtag not my fault <laughs> till next week I'm Elia Einhorn I am Nick Dawson peace and walking dead we both thought this was the other person's yeah. podcast 